Today, I'm going to show you how you can use Metrics, the best liquidity pool software out there, to find and simulate potential returns for different concentrated liquidity pools. Let's hop right in. First things first, if you're using any of the following tools, including Crystal, Poolfish, or DeFi Llama, to discover and simulate potential returns for concentrated liquidity pools, you just need to throw those ones right out the window and stop using them. And I'll tell you exactly why. Number one, Crystal is great when it comes to actually tracking your portfolio. This is the tool that I personally use for tracking my portfolio. But when when it comes to actually finding different liquidity pools, the tool sucks. There's barely any functionality there. That's because they are mainly for tracking. Poolfish is very similar to Metrics Finance. It's just Metrics Finance has way more functionality. And then DeFi Llama is a great tool, but the thing is it is not focused on concentrated liquidity pools, which means when you are looking for concentrated liquidity pools on this tool, it's going to show you an average estimate and it's not going to show you a lot of data. But if you're looking for overall just liquidity pools and yield farms in general, DeFi Llama is a great tool. But I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of all those tools and want to head over to metrics finance and go into the discover page and once we are here we have a few different options right we can select our exchange we can select our network and we can select our calculation range now me personally i don't really care what exchange and what network i'm on as long as i'm getting a good return but with that being said i'm not going to go throw my capital into something that's super low tvl i'm going to go ahead and hit select all next to exchange as well as select all next to network because once again I don't care what exchange or network I'm on. Additionally, my calculation range, I am going to use 14 days, mainly because I like to look at more recent data when it comes to actually finding different concentrated liquidity pools. Now, right off the bat, you can see that we have 1,390 different pools. That's a lot of different pools, right? Additionally, since I typically deploy around 10 to $15,000 into a single liquidity pool, I'm going to want to make sure that the liquidity is going to be higher than $500,000. That's kind of my bare minimum. My general rule of thumb is don't make up for more than 5% of the overall liquidity pools TV but additionally I don't like to deploy into assets that have very very low liquidity so typically I'll put that minimum at about five hundred thousand dollars and as you can see we've already taken off about 500 pools off the list we now have 878 pools to look at but with that being said I'm gonna make sure that the average APR is higher than 10% because once again I do not want to look at low return things we just scratched off another 200 different pools also I specifically want to look for pools that include ethereum in them so where it says must include I'm gonna put ethereum as asset one if I really wanted to I could look at ethereum and BTC it's going to show me all the ethereum to BTC pools over here but in this scenario I just want to look over at ethereum based pools I don't care if it's ethereum USDC or ethereum Bitcoin or ethereum of I don't care what it is I want to make sure it has ethereum in it mainly because right now I'm looking for ethereum pools now we got 460 pools that's a lot of different liquidity pools so it's time to narrow some stuff down I'm gonna sort by average APR you're gonna see that we have a ton of these ones that are just like crazy returns a lot of the times this is actually a glitch in the data source and that's because metrics finance pulls directly from uniswap it pulls directly from pancakeswap it pulls directly from the exchanges api's that they provide us with basically so sometimes what we need to do is we need to go average APR and do lower than a thousand percent and that's going to take us from 460 pools to now 435 pools so already scratching some of those off the list I'm going to sort by stuff that has a very high fee to TVL ratio and the reason why is because this is going to tell me about pools that are being traded very very often like for example this pool right here has $13,000 in 24 hour average fees it has a TVL of $575,000 that makes its fee to TVL ratio roughly 2.3 percent if we scroll down the list to like let's just say page three you're going to notice that this one over here has $8,000 in fees which is less than that Brett pool that we just looked at but its TVL is significantly higher at roughly four and a half million dollars that means that the ratio is 0.1738 percent it's not nearly as good as this Brett pool over here so what I could do is I could actually favorite this pool and it'll go right into the favorited pools section me personally I'm gonna do some more research and see what Brett actually is and see if it's an asset that I want to deploy into we could do that by pulling up coin gecko and literally just pulling up the asset take a look at Brett over here you can see it's currently down 3.1 percent on the day has a market cap of roughly 350 million dollars so it's not a brand new asset so it's not a super low market cap asset with only five ten million dollar market cap but it's also not a multi-billion dollar market cap asset so what that tells me is hey we're probably gonna have to have a broader range in this liquidity pool we could zoom out look at the seven day chart looks like we saw a hard hit over here we went for roughly 4.6 cents all the way to a bottom of roughly 2.9 cents so it saw a pretty decent decline right there uh, but then went right back up to around four cents so this also tells me that this asset is going to be very very volatile looking at the past one month it does not look too pretty 
Also looking at the past three months, it looks a lot better, but once again, not too pretty. We zoom out and we look at one year, it's going to be the same as three months. That's because this asset has only been around since late February. So me personally, I don't like to deal with this volatility. And while it is doing a pretty good average APR, and we could probably get a higher APR if we tighten up our range, it's just too much of a risk for me because I think number one, it has pretty low liquidity right here, only $575,000. But number two, it is just a risky asset and very, very volatile because well, from the looks of it, it looks like a meme coin. Now, granted, if we want to confirm our suspicion about this being a meme coin, we could just pull up the website. And as you can see, this looks like a meme coin to me, basically. It's Pepe's best friend on base, and Pepe is a meme coin. So this isn't something that I'm going to want to personally include in my portfolio. Now, granted, I'm not saying that you can't make money in meme coins. You most definitely can. That's how I got started in the cryptocurrency space. But the thing is, when you're working with larger capital, like $50,000, $100,000, you're not going to want to risk that capital in hopes to make a lot of money and then end up taking absurd risk and actually losing that money. Basically, what I'm saying is you can't really take a calculated risk here considering that, well, this is a meme coin. It's volatile. There's no utility. There's no reason to buy it strictly based on supply and demand. There was obviously some demand for it, which is why it shot up. But recently, that demand has been going down. And of course, the price has been depreciated. Whereas if we go into other tokens like Arrow that actually have utility or Res that have utility or other assets that just have a utility in general, we can take more calculated risk, which is going to be a better scenario in my personal opinion. Now, me personally, I don't want to look at 435 more pools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this filter right here and I'm just going to do higher than 0.1%. And that's going to be based on the current market. Obviously, you're going to have to play around this number depending on how the market's doing because when there's super high trading volume and activity compared to its overall TVL, you might want to bring that up to 0.2% or 0.3%. But when there's very, very low activity, you might want to bring that down to 0.05% or so on and so forth, basically. I see Arrow right up here and I've been hearing Arrow making waves, basically. And I know they have a DeFi platform and Arrow plays a pretty big role in that ecosystem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Arrow on the simulation page right here. Additionally, I'm going to head right over to Coin gecko once again and i'm going to pull up arrow token as you can see it's currently down roughly three percent on the day that's in line with what brett was doing and if we look at the seven day chart it's very very similar to brett now i know arrow token is not a meme coin it's an actual utility token behind the aerodrome platform uh, but when we look at the past one month you can see that it's not looking too pretty but over the past three months it's looking really really good once again similar to brett so what i would think in my head is hey what do these two assets have in common because arrow is not a meme coin but brett is a meme coin well, what they have in common is they're both on the base network. So what I might do is since there's not a base token to compare these assets to, I might just pull up the overall base DeFi TVL. So this is a scenario where we would use DeFi Llama because it's a great tool. It's just it's not focused on concentrated liquidity. If we go over to the base section and we look at the past three months, we're going to want to basically look at halfway through February, essentially, you can see that base TVL has only grown. It hasn't really seen a huge decline, but tokens on the base network are going up over the past three months and then falling right back down more recently over the past month or so. So I want to be careful with that. Now, Arrow, I would be more comfortable including in my portfolio, especially if it's doing a very, very high return and this is a long-term hold. But at the same exact time, I don't want to invest into a liquidity pool with the asset just constantly depreciating. So what I would do is I would map out some scenarios right here. So my max price, I'm going to put that right up here at that 30-day high. My min price, I'm going to put that right down here at that 30-day low. And then I'm just going to see where I'm currently at, right? Number one, I'm at the top of liquidity distribution. That is good because that means that the returns that I'm showing over here are going to be more accurate. But the other thing I have to factor in is, hey, volume is higher over here and it's not as high over here. So I want to use the past five days worth of volume. So I'm going to change my calculation range to five days. That's still about 115%, which is going to be an accurate return of what we actually get. But it does give me about 65% arrow and about 35% ETH. I personally want to adjust that ratio because keep in mind, this price has been going up recently. And we're looking at how many arrows equal one Ethereum, which basically means that if the price is going up, Ethereum is the asset that's doing better. Recently, there was this scenario where Arrow did pretty decent and then it started to consolidate, which means that both assets were performing very, very similar to each other. So I'm going to adjust my range to have about 60% Arrow. And I could do that by broadening my top range and just having that at around 3660, basically, and having this around 1500. And as you can see, that puts me at about 60% Arrow. If I'm still not comfortable with that, if I still think maybe Arrow will do well long term, but in the short term, ETH is definitely going to do better. I would probably want to bring that to about 50% arrow or maybe 55% arrow. In this scenario, I think 60%, 40% is pretty solid. I'm going to bring that calculation range back to five days, and that's going to show us about 105% APR. I'm happy with that because if I deploy $10,000 of capital, I'm making about 30 bucks per day in this liquidity pool. 
If I deploy $100,000 of capital, I'm making about 290 bucks per day. So that's pretty solid. And keep in mind, Metrics Finance, just like all those other tools I mentioned in the beginning, uses historical data. But I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Now that we have ETH Arrow, I'm just going to hit that little favorite icon and put it over in my favorite pools section. And then I want to start looking for other liquidity pools. Now, Res, I've already taken a look at in the past, and it's hyped up right now. It's an airdrop, basically. So I'm not going to want to deploy into that because there's a lot of people that will just simply sell that airdrop because they don't really care to hold the token. And there's no problem in that. That's personally what I do because I don't really care about farming airdrops. If I get an airdrop, if it's a token that I don't really care too much about, I'm just going to sell it. But we have ETH to USDC over here. This has a 35% average APR. It's not horrible. I imagine if we tighten that range, we could get something a little bit higher. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up ETH to USDC. Now, keep in mind, there could be better ETH to USDC pools out there. Like this is showing 35%, but ETH to USDBC over here is about 38%, a little bit better. So first thing I'm going to do is just map out potential return for this. And then I'm going to see the best possible return that I could get using a tool that I'm about to show you. So once again, I want to look at how many USDCs equal one ETH. So we're basically looking at the dollar price of ETH. And I'm going to bring that max price to the 30 day high, bring that min price to the 30 day low. Now, as you can see, we're about to go out of range. We have about 65 percent ETH over here we're trading towards that bottom price so I'm gonna to want to bring that down to about 2800 and considering that the price has been consolidating since roughly halfway through April and it's currently May 5th I'm gonna bring that max price over here to about 3520 basically that's gonna give me about 50 percent USDC and 50 percent ETH the reason why I would do something like this is because the price is consolidating I don't really care too much about impermanent loss in this scenario I'm trying to make money now, if the price of ETH is going up and up and up, I'm going to want to have my max price all the way up here and start with like 65% ETH. But that's not the scenario. We are consolidating and I don't really care too much about impermanent loss. I just want to make fees. So 50-50 is a good ratio to have. So we got 2800 to 3520. And going back to what I just said earlier, we want to make sure that this is the best possible return for ETH to USDC. So what I'm going to do is number one, make sure I'm at the top of distribution. And as you can see, I'm close, but I'm not quite there. So I'm going to adjust that current price until I get to the top of distribution. It's about 65% compared to 75%. So not too much of a difference. That's fine. 65% on ETH is still really, really good. We look at that volume history. It is relatively consistent, but I am going to use the past 14 days worth of volume just to be a little bit more conservative. And once again, that's about 65%. So we could keep that around 14 days. Now I'm going to head over to the simulate page on metrics finance, and I'm going to hit pair. Pair is like the gold and the bread and butter and the best thing that you can find in concentrated liquidity. There's not another tool that does this, basically. You can select every single exchange, every single network, kind of like we just did for the Discover page. But what we can do is we can select our pair. Let's just say ETH as well as USDC. And what this is going to do is this is going to identify every single ETH to USDC pool across Uniswap, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, Orca, Radium, and all these different networks, basically. So it's going to find all these different pools just like that. Literally in five seconds, we print out every single ETH to USDC pool, basically. Now, obviously, we need to go in here and we need to enter our parameters. Remember, we used a calculation range of 14 days. We also went ahead and adjusted the price over here to roughly 3110. Essentially, we'll just go ahead and use that. So I'm going to adjust the current price to 3110. And then our range was 2800 to 3520, basically. So we would just go ahead and put 2800. And then our max price, we would put 3520. And just like that, we see every single ETH to USDC pair with the parameters that we just entered on that one over here on the base network, ETH to USDC. Now, if we dive deeper, you can see that the base network one's getting about 65%. And if we go ahead and locate that one over here, it's going to be this one, 65%. We could see that on PancakeSwap, on the Ethereum network, we're getting 78%. We scroll down a little bit more on PancakeSwap on the base network. So same exact network as that original one that we found that was doing 65%. Just instead of being on Uniswap, we're going to be on PancakeSwap, 102%. There's also some ones that are doing like 75% over here that have a little bit more liquidity. Optimism doing about 97%. So once again, not too bad. Me personally, what I like to do, instead of just looking at ETH to USDC, I also want to look at ETH to USDT. And I want to look at other derivatives of ETH. So you can hit this little button that says similar assets. And what that does is that will showcase to you every single asset that's similar to USDC, as well as every single asset that's similar to ETH. And when we say similar, we mean same price. So that means ETH and staked ETH, those ones have the exact same price. So we're going to look at basically staked ETH pools as well. And that's going to be included in here. Or USDC, USDT, 
doesn't matter. If you don't really care about the difference, hit that similar asset button. Also, if you want to contribute, Metrics Finance essentially has a whitelist of assets that are similar to each other. You could click that little question mark right there. It's going to pop open a form. If you want to add to that list, you could just go ahead and submit it in here. But just like that, we can now start to analyze and see the best possible return that we can get. Once again, we're still seeing those USDC ones, but we're going to be able to have more options here. And so far, I haven't really found anything better than the initial pool that we found that was about 100% Actually, I just did. This one's about 130% using ETH DAI. So who would have knew? Putting ETH and DAI together gets us a substantially higher return if we're on the Ethereum network. Now, one consideration I would have here, if we're getting 100% on the base network, maybe we have $10,000 deployment. We probably just want to be on the base network, even though it's doing a lower return than Ethereum network. The main reason why is because this one is on the Ethereum network. You have the high gas fees. But if we scroll down, we got ETH DAI over here, 95% on an Optimism network. There's also a 350% one on the optimism network now keep in mind when we see outliers like this we can just hit simulate position and we want to go ahead and pull them up just to make sure that the volume is being consistent liquidity distribution is being consistent all that type of stuff so now that i have this pulled up i'm gonna go ahead and enter my range which is 2800 to 3520 basically we're at that top of distribution so that's fine but if we look at volume history you could see we got really good volume and then we have absolutely horrible volume and we have really good volume and then horrible volume so i just wouldn't deploy into this one but we could keep on scrolling down the list and i can't seem to find anything better than that 100 percent per year one on the base network and as you can see there's a lot of different opportunities so this is the bread and butter this is the best tool that you're going to find out there metrics finance now, i want to go ahead and give you guys a full disclaimer i'm the founder of metrics finance i'm not a software developer but i've invested over fifty thousand dollars of my own personal capital capital into developing this metrics finance tool. And the only reason why I did that is because I'm a liquidity provider and I literally cannot provide liquidity if I do not have this type of data readily available to me. And there are no other tools out there that provide this type of data. So obviously metrics finance is one of my companies and we do make some money off of it, but we operate mainly in the red, but that's also because it helps me out a ton in my personal liquidity provision. And I'm able to make money off of providing liquidity. So what I will say is we're one of the only tools out there that is built for liquidity providers by liquidity providers a lot of tools out there just want to capitalize on you guys they're all about profits and they don't really have the data that you need as an actual liquidity provider because they don't know what data you need so metrics finance it's the best tool out there there's a ton of free information and free features on there just like there is on DeFi llama but metrics finance also does have a pro plan and it's as cheap as 35 bucks per month so if you're making you know even 10 bucks a day you're paying that off every single month obviously even if you're making a buck per day you basically break even with the metrics finance cost hope you guys enjoyed if you did drop a like subscribe notifications turned on i will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.